They said I was small. They told me I was slow. They told me I was weak. They told me I wasn't a college football player. I didn't walk like them. I didn't look like them. I didn't lift like them. I wasn't fast like them. I am strong, I am fast, and I am not weak. And guess what? This is where the dream begins. She got games. She got game. When the W drills, she got game. Put her out there in the middle. She'll come down and hit somebody. I don't think Tony thinks she's a girl sometimes. Girls don't do that, and Tony can. What can she do? I was born in Detroit, Michigan. The area I grew up in was very rough. A lot of gangbangers, a lot of drug addicts. Not a lot of good housing. Growing up, it was really, really hard for me because I felt like I was alone most of the time. I was my own role model. When I was four years old, I was physically and sexually abused and I was taken out of the home of my mother. The process of foster care is definitely rough because you don't know what type of people who are gonna like try to adopt you. The first family that I was getting in, they weren't really as stable and I was getting physically abused. And then the second family, I was getting mentally and physically abused. The third family I had was my biological mother, but they felt that the home was not stable enough for me. So then they took me and placed me into another home. The feeling of not being wanted only made me push harder. trying to learn how to put on my pads and stuff by myself and making sure that they covered my lower chest. So sometimes I have my pig sets out or I'll just like tuck them inside of my shirt set so that no one pulls on them. When I was six years old, I definitely knew that uh, football was the sport that I wanted to continue and play for the rest of my life. I just was tired of doing all the girly sports. Trying to have confidence in a male-dominated sport was really, really hard. All my sports helped me get through tough times. They kept my mind off of thinking about not being wanted. In high school, I was the homecoming queen and also a football player. My goal after my senior year of high school was to try to play at the next level. When I had ovarian cancer, I knew that my body was gonna be weak, I was gonna lose my hair, and this could be life-threatening. Going through the process of chemotherapy was hard. It's a lot going through it, especially when you don't really have any family to sit there and go through it with you. I actually just like continued to try to work out, but there would be some days where I couldn't even get out of bed because it's like the chemo made me feel worse than the cancer did. I dropped all the way down to like 90 pounds. So my thought process was to try to get my weight back up, started eating a lot differently, getting my body into shape and going forward. When I went in remission, my first thought in my head was definitely, you know, I'm gonna live. This cancer is never gonna come back again. Could you see yourself living in one of these houses? Definitely. Nice family, a husband, two or three kids, a golden retriever. I moved to LA because I wanted to be around new people, new surroundings. 
East LA was very, very welcoming. They allowed me to do all the workouts. They treated me fairly exactly how I asked them with no special treatments. So that made me feel like I was a part of the team already. Some are like my brothers, some are like my best friends, some are like my kids. East LA has given me a place to call home, a place to say I have a family away from home, and a place where I feel as though uh, my opportunities are finally being opened up to and that scouts are actually taking a look at my talents. Hello, Tony, this is Coach Carter. It's about oh, 11.30 where I am. I think I'm in the airport somewhere, but I wanted to speak with you and see how your, or where your interest lies as far as playing ball at the next level. Have a great day, man. Bye-bye. Uh, I probably listen to it like, <laughs> like every week. For the first time in history, I am actually the first female to be offered a full ride scholarship to play college football at a four-year university as a non-specialist. So many people know about me, uh, ended up on Sports Illustrated. John Ross commented, changing the world, and that he was proud of me. Cam Chancellor actually direct messaged me, and he said that he was happy that I wore the same number as him. I've flown all the way to the New Orleans Saints to accept the reward called a game changer for changing people's minds about what females are capable of. My ultimate goal for football is to become the first female to be ever drafted into the NFL. I remember someone telling me that I would never get paid to play at the next level because I was so small and that I was a female. No one's achievements should ever be based on gender, but by confidence and talent. It puts that drive in me today to prove to people that I can do whatever I'm capable of doing, as long as I keep my mind and my head and in my heart. That's where it all comes, it all starts with heart. I have to be so good that they can't ignore me. Tony Harris is gonna do it because I am different. Check these videos out. I already watched them. They're heat. Heat only. This is what we do. You got to check them out. Check out these videos and subscribe. If you haven't done it, you're on your couch, you're in your bed, you got to subscribe so you can watch all the rest of the videos. Come on, man.